Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and strap on those running shoes because today you'll be running through a campsite. You'll be trying to be the first one to get to the finish line. But you better watch out because crossing provisional areas along the way will allow you to trip others, consume a power drink, or use a skyrocket, or cause someone to fall into a hole. Camping Run is the funniest and craziest race in the craziest campsite. It's for three to five players, ages nine and up, takes 15 minutes to play, and is published by Red Mice. It's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm gonna show you how the game works, and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so any art and components you see here are prototype and are subject to change. You're going to want to check the Kickstarter project link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. In Camping Run, you're going to select one of these races to be yours, and you're going to be racing through the campsite trying to be the first to the finish line. Then after selecting their character, they get to select a deck of cards, and each of these decks of cards are essentially the same except what they look like. Each one has its own color and icon there, so you can pick the one you like the most. And on the back sides will be cards numbered 1 through 10. And again, everybody's deck has the same 10 cards in it. Now here's the board in the game. We have a full complement of five players. They each put their racer at the beginning. And you're trying to be the first one to get to the finish line. Now how a round works is each player is going to select one of their 10 cards at the beginning of the game. And they're going to place it face down in front of them. Once they're all there, everyone will reveal them face up. So here we have a 7, two threes, a 5, and a 1. Whichever player has played the highest card will get to go two spaces forward on the board. And they'll move first. So let's say it was this player, they would go up two. All other players, regardless of what they played, will move up one. Now for the cards played, each player will take their card and place it face down in a discard pile and out of the game. Meaning, you're only able to play each of your ten cards once throughout the game. Now let's fast forward a turn and say the board looked like this, and then let's say in this next round, this player had the highest number, they move two, everyone else moves one. Now you see that three of the players now have moved past one of these provisional areas, and there's some of these throughout the board in different spots. Now each of those players that pass that provisional area are able to pull one of these event cards, and they'll be using this next round. So how this works in the next round, everyone will select a card as normal, put it face down, then the players with those event cards will each give their card to another player simultaneously, like on the count of three. Then the cards are flipped over and we see provisionally who would possibly win this right now, and right now it would be the ten. But then we flip over the different event cards. For example, this one is the power drink, and this gives plus two to this number, so that made that four a six. This one is tripping. This player would get tripped and they would subtract two from this number, so this is eight. So this one is still winning. And then this one is the skyrocket and it automatically lets this player win the round regardless of what they played. So this one beat, which was turned into an eight, but originally was a 10. This player would win the round, move two. Everyone else would move one like normal. These event cards would get discarded out of the game. And remember, anytime any of the players are crossing any one of these provisional areas, they're getting one of those event cards to use in that very next round. Now there is another twist to this game I haven't yet showed you. There is a referee. Each round, one player is going to be the referee and get the referee token. Now at the beginning of the game, it's given to either the least sporty person or alternatively to the oldest player. But each subsequent round, it's given to the player that played the lowest number. So last round, this player played a one, so this player gets the referee token. Now one of the benefits of the referee is if there's a tie for the highest number, the referee gets to decide which player actually wins and gets to move forward too. And if the referee happened to have been one of the ones tied, they could make themselves win. Another advantage of being the referee is when event cards are played, the referee can take any one of these cards and reassign it to any other player. Well, maybe the player that placed this, this one placed it here and said, hey, you know what, I'm going to have you move forward. Don't worry about it. But we don't trust them. We're going to put it right back on them. And after both cards are flipped, let's say, oh, wow, turns out this was a hole. This player was not telling the truth here. The hole causes this player not to win no matter what, because normally this player would have nine. Uh, this one allows this player to move ahead one more space than normal, and this one allows it to move backwards one more space. And this actually happens if they were moving forward, this would happen afterwards, which means they could actually get an event card before they move backwards. But anyway, uh, this player has a nine, we have an eight, 
a one, a four, and a two. So this player would have normally a one, but because the referee re reassigned that card, they will not win. This player will win and move two. Everyone else will move one by default, but this player will move an additional one, and this one will move back to where they were. And at the end of that round, whoever played the lowest card will be the new referee for next round. And if there happens to be a tie for the lowest number, the referee gets to decide who's next round's referee. And by the way, sometimes it is possible to have multiple event cards played. They essentially stack. You do each of the cards that are there, and sometimes they actually cancel each other out. Now, the game wins as soon as anybody crosses the finish line, but of course, it's possible, like if this player came in first, they'd move two, everyone else would move one, and so these two players would actually need a photo finish. Whoever played the higher card in that last round would win, and if it was tied, you'd continue to go back to previous rounds to see who had played the highest card. Now, if you're playing with children under 10 years old, it's recommended taking all the event cards out, only keeping the normal numbered cards. You can also keep in the referee. Well, there you have Camping Run, and as I showed in the overview, you'll be guessing what cards others will be playing and trying to just barely have the highest number while trying to remember which cards have been played before. Now, you'll also be wreaking havoc on the other players with the event cards from the provisional areas. Now, if you'd like to see the final art and components and the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me in the description of this video, and it will take you to the Kickstarter project page. And I'm sure the five folks at Red Mice would love your support.